Hello and welcome to Module 5 ACLs for IPv4 configuration. So we are going to learn how to configure ACLs. This is the beginning of setting up firewalls. We're going to be able to write statements uh, that will set up a firewall on the Cisco router. Uh, so take all the notes that needs to be taken and don't forget to submit them when you're open. So we're going to be jumping back and forth at our notes. So start taking notes immediately. Everything that you see on the screen must be taken. And uh, so let's start. So I broke down the whole chapter into a couple of notes. Please don't just scroll down and copy everything. Uh, just listen carefully. So I'll give you good hints on how to do this. So when we do the exercises, uh, you'll much better go and understand this. All right. So there are two types of ACLs. Um, standard and extended. The standard ACL, if you remember from the last chapter, uh, uses the numbers 1 to 99 or 1300 to 1999. Um, standard ACLs, all they do is inspect packets on the source IP address. And um, so if a packet comes in, we're only concerned with the source IP address, where you're coming from, and I can either permit you or deny you accordingly. And when you are creating a standard um, ACL, you want to place that close to the destination. And the reason you want to do that is because if you place it close to the source, the source will not be able to go anywhere else. So if, you, if they are denied, they will never be able to access anything else because their source IP address is there and the access list will block them from going out. All right, so you need to place it close to the source. And here's an example. You type access dash list, you put the number between 1 and 99, and here you write the statement either deny or permit. Then you write the source IP address with its what? Excuse me, with its wild mask. Now, it is best to write a, a remark and then explain what this is for, what the statement is for. All right, so a remark will not be executed. Anything after the word remark will not be executed. So here I wrote, I said, network 192.168.10.4 access uh, permitted or permitted, whatever. Write whatever you want. All right, and then you type exit, and then you need to place this. So you go to the interface, and you place it on the end. You will say IP access group, dash group, the number 10, and it's going to be on the inbound, coming into the router. That's what this is means. That's what this means, the end. All right? That's it. Now, we'll, we'll do examples, and you'll see what I'm talking about with this. If you're doing extended ACLs, um, you can use numbers between 100 and 199 or 2,000 to 2,699. Typically, you're not going to use always within 100 to 199. Same thing with the standard. It's always between 1 to 99. Um, you're going to inspect all the packets. You're going to be inspecting not only at the source IP, but you're going to be looking at source IP, destination IP, and the port number. And where do you place that? You place it close to the source because now you know exactly what that uh, device is going, uh, what that host is going to do for the network. So if they are going to a specific location, trying to access a specific application, a port, uh, you can block them or permit them before they leave. Uh, you don't want to put it on the destination, close to the destination, because, I mean, they'll be traveling and wasting time if they are need to be blocked at the destination. So block them before they leave, if they are to be denied. All right, so here's an example. You say access list 100. You're going to deny the TCP protocol. Why TCP protocol? Because I'm going to deny port 80, which is HTTP. I'm going to deny this network with this wildcard going anywhere. So this any means any destination. So if you want to do any destination, remember the quad ones, ones in the wildcard, it doesn't matter what the uh, network address is, that means it's going anywhere, equal 80. So this network, 192.168.10.0 with this wildcard will not be able, will not be able to do HTTP to anyone, right? That's all it says. And then you say IP access list permit IP any any. That means any type of, uh, by the way, if you wrote TCP here instead of IP, 
That means you're only allowing, remember there is an implicit deny at the end of every axis. So this permit, there's a deny, right? So therefore, if I don't write this statement right here, what's going to happen? Complete statement. That means you're going to deny these people and there's, there's an implicit deny if there's no match. So everybody is going to be denied. So here's something to remember. You must have at least one permit in every uh, in every um, access list, it can, they cannot be all denied because the last one has to be. There's an implicit denied anyway. So here, if you just want to deny this network from doing port 80, so you need to permit everybody else. Now, if you say permit TCP any any because you denied TCP here, that means you're only permitting all the other TCP protocols. UDP protocols will not be, will not will still be denied. And ICMP will still be denied. But if you type permit IP any any, anybody that uses IP will be permitted, uh, such as TCP, UDP, and ICMP. So everybody will be permitted. Any means from any source to any destination, you are permitting. Okay? So now we're only denying this network from doing HTTP. You exit and you go to the interface and you say IP access group number 10. Actually, number 110 in this case. And I want it to be on the end, coming into the router. Remember that. In, coming into the interface. All right. Okay, so now let's talk about a named access list. Instead of just writing numbers right here, you could write named access list. Just use names instead. And names are unlimited. You could do, you know. These are, you're limited to a certain amount of IP uh, access list, but with names, you can make up names the way you want to, and they're better description of what you want to do. So you can use names instead of numbers. They can be extended or, ex uh, ex uh, I'm sorry, standard or extended. Names should be written in capital letters, as you can see in the example. So they can differentiate between, by the way, anytime you write a name, like a pool name, uh, if you remember when we did the DHCP pool, we made it capital letters. They should be capital letters. It's not required, but it's preferable that you do that. And you want to place them close to the source. Actually, it all depends if you are a standard or a list. So this is not necessarily true. I'll take that out. All right, so here's an example. I'm going to do an IP. You, By the way, you have, when you do any named access list, as you can see here, you didn't have the word IP, but here you start when you are creating a named access list, you have to start excuse me, with the word IP. You say IP access list, and then you write either standard or extended. In this case, I chose extended, and I named this access list, this extended access list, no email. All right, then I write a remark first. So description of what this access list is going to do. Remember, the the word remark, anything after that, this whole line will not be executed. All right, then the first statement in the no email access list is going to say deny TCP any host, any host to host 192.168.10.20 equal SMTP. So I wrote the keyword this time instead of the port number 25. So you could do either or. So what I'm trying to do is I want to deny anybody going to this uh, server, 192.168.10.20, and try to reach the SMTP if they're running SMTP port 25. So port 25 will be blocked from anybody going here. They can access this device if this device is running HTTP or anything else, but they cannot access the email, right? And then I will say permit IP any any. Right? You've got to remember to do that. Otherwise, because I wrote it, otherwise everybody else will also be denied. All right, then you type exit, interface group, and then you say IP, I'm sorry, interface G0 slash zero, and then you say IP dash access group, and then you write the name, and now you're going out of the router, out of the interface. All right, now, added layers of security. Now let's do... Um, what happens if I want to take care of the VTY ports? So 
remember the VTY, either you're doing Telnet or SSH, what you're going to do is uh, they have to do a password, right? Now, in addition to that, what I can do is say, all right, if you have an IP address, uh, not, first of all, what I'm going to check is I'm going to see if your IP address, uh, if you are Telnetting from a specific IP address, if you are, and then I'll prompt you for a password. But if you are not telling for telnetting from a specific IP address, then I'm not even going to ask you for um, a password. All right. So this is uh, this is an added layer of security. So in case somebody uh, was using Wireshark and was able to capture your telnet password, right? Most likely they're going to use a different machine with a different IP address uh, to break into your router using that stolen. Uh, password but because i have an access list i'm going to say okay uh does do you have a specific ip address that you should be telnetting from and if you're telnetting from other than that specific ip address you're going to be blocked right so now you not only you need to know the password but you need to be telnetting from a specific ip right that's the whole idea so that's another layer of security so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a username admin with a secret password called class. And I'm going to say IP access standard. I'm going to create a standard named access list called Telnet. All right, I'm going to give it a remark. I'm allowing this host to access. And then I'm going to say permit host 192.168.10.120. All right, so, and remember, I didn't write anything after that. That means everybody else by default is denied, right? So this access list called Telnet has only one statement in it that says to permit 192.168.10.120. All right, then I go to the line VTY 0 to 4, and I say login local. Login local, which means when they, they're going to be prompted for a, a username and a password, right? Uh, where uh, When you say login local, that means I have the login information in here. You need to type in password. Remember that? Transport input Telnet, which means you're only allowed to tell that you can't do SSH. Now, when I type access dash class Telnet in, remember, I don't do IP access group when you are uh, applying uh, an access list to a VTY port, you have to use the command access dash class Telnet in. So I'm applying this access list to the VTY 0 to 4 on the router coming in, right? It's always in because people are gonna be telnetting into the router. And where are you placing this? On the router that people are gonna telnet to, right? So first thing that's gonna happen when somebody tries to telnet, well, the router is gonna say, oh, you got an access list called telnet on there. They come in and they check your IP address, your source IP address. Is it 192.168.10.120? If the answer is yes, then I'm going to prompt you for a username and a password, and I'll let you in. If it is not, if it is not your IP address, then you're blocked. Okay? Simple as that. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here, and on the next video, we will continue with the rest. All right? So please take your notes and submit them, and I'll see you on the next video.